That game plan was executed to perfection. Ran the ball and converted on third down. Flacco and those receivers in an offensive line, that's how you win football games. This is In the Nest with Bruce Bosner, proudly presented by Science and Kirk. Every Sunday morning at 9 on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Sit down with Bruce to analyze and take an in-depth look at the upcoming Ravens game. All out and all in on three. One, two, three. All out and all in. Now, here's In the Nest on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Woof, woof. Four days later, and that game still has my... uh, it's in my crawl. Uh, Carl, I was there with, uh, watched the game with Ryan, which was a lot of fun. I've never heard anybody cheer and scream like him, Donald, the whole time. It was... <laughs> it was it, into the game. Yeah, I mean, it was unbelievable. <laughs> and uh, it was a tough one, but I... I apologize we, for abandoning... I know I abandoned you. you didn't, I game. love Ryan. You know, he's fun to be with. And let's get Barry on the phone. Barry, how are you today? Hey, how you doing? Weird things happen in this country today, isn't it? It's really sad. Uh, no. It is. It's very. It's rather frightening, to be honest with you. It is frightening. So I wrote a little piece after the game on uh, Sunday. I want you guys to listen to it and then comment on it because it got a lot of play on the internet. I had a, a ton of response from it, and here we go. The Ravens cannot put anyone away. With a 17-7 lead entering the fourth quarter, the Ravens were unable to score on two straight possessions while Breeze engineered two TD drives and a field goal to win the game. The final two-minute drive for a TD by Flacco went for naught as Tucker inexplicably missed a PAT. One blemished on a near-perfect career, he gets a pass. It happens. However... The second the Ravens score, the only thing that was in my mind was a two-point try with Lamar Jackson. The coach of New Orleans had seven fourth downs, went for it six times. He dared to win that game. Coach Harbaugh did not. They did not have an answer for Lamar Jackson, all right, inside that five-yard line. In overtime, Donald... Who usually wins? The team with the better quarterback. There ain't no doubt about which team had the better quarterback. Not that Joe played bad, but nobody's like... Well, you can take out the first two words in overtime in any game. The team uh, but, with the best quarterback but yeah, the but overtime, is going to win 80% of I, the games. I just can't, I can't question going for the point after. I just can't do it. Well, if you, you know, I'm not either because, you know, but you, when you dare to win, when you dare to be great, like bringing in Kershaw in the ninth inning the other day, might have cost them the first game last night. But when you bring in Kershaw in the ninth inning to save a game, you have to dare to be great. Well, anyway, I, I think yeah. we've, I think we've seen Harbaugh go for it. He goes for it many, a lot. He does. It would have taken a lot of heart to go for it. But the real reason to go for it is if you were at the game like you and me were, you knew that Tucker was failing from that side of the field. The wind was incredible. Nobody will ever tell me that he shanked that uh, kick. The wind blew it away. He almost missed an extra point before, and he almost he almost missed a field goal from 30 yards. I, I can't I can't imagine. That it was even a consideration for him to consider. Well, Harbaugh this is such a difficult. Was. Did Harbaugh he say it was? Said it was. I missed that. I mean, I, well, I can't go yeah. ahead. Go ahead, Barry. Here's here's the thing. You know, look. I mean, this is one example, but I, you know, I kept thinking we lost another game uh, this way, and I so I, I looked it up about this is about Harbaugh in his entire career with the Ravens uh, in terms of close games. And decided by one touchdown or less. He is thirty-two and forty-two. Hmm. Now that that's a, that's a that's not even a five hundred average in less than one touchdown. We lose most of the times if we're in a tight game. Well, that's it's, it's in certainly his entire been career way. at the head of the team. So, uh, as the head coach, what I'm saying is it's symptomatic of of Harbaugh in tight games. We don't win those games. In terms of, if you want to say 500 ball, we're even below 500, not to mention we should be up much higher than that. So that's just a statistic. I was curious. I think, how many times have I seen this happen? Well, the last two years with Dean Pease, it seemed like it happened five times a year. But let me finish. 
All right. Yep. Wait a second. I'm pretty impressed by the Barry's uh, research. Well, he did some homework. Unbelievable. Barry did some homework. Go ahead. <laughs> sitting where we sit. I'll tell you where Harbaugh it does take risk on, on, on fourth down and uh, – and he goes for the extra. He goes for the uh, the, the first down. The end zone. because he knew Tucker could make coaches the field goal. Won't try to score in the end zone. But listen, they won't try the one he did in the fourth quarter because he knew Tucker could not kick that field goal from like forty five yards because of because of the situation. But here's the, what got me about this game, and it's kind of going unnoticed. Sitting where we sit in the end zone, okay. When I was with you guys before I abandoned you, right? It was very clear that Hayden Hurst had at least a five yard advantage. On the corner, all right, when the Ravens were down 21-17. And damn it, Joe underthrew him. And nobody yeah. says anything. He right. underthrew him. The guy was clear for a touchdown. That was and, into the wind, right? Yeah. But he but in other words, he's been you. thrown into the wind. He's got the best arm there is. And he underthrew him like he always does. And guess what happens? You all right? The ball comes back. He's got to come back to get it. And yes, he dropped it, but the guy was coming at him at full speed. It wasn't like a clear open pass ball that was dropped. Here's one more thing. Let's see more of Lamar Jackson, especially when you're inside the 10-yard line. Joe, look, it took him six plays to get into the end zone, and he couldn't do it. They had to bring Lamar Jackson in to run the ball in. If you're going to bring Lamar Jackson in, can somebody explain to me why is Joe get him on the off field? the field? Unless you're going to put... Why is he a receiver? No, it makes yeah, no sense. I, if you want to leave Flacco the as the quarterback and put Lamar in to cause some havoc, great. But why are you leaving him in? He doesn't even he doesn't even try to which is fine with me. I don't want him getting injured. But it, it's eleven against ten. Look at it this way. He's the he's the his role is to become a receiver in that situation. And he everybody so. knows that he can't throw the ball to him because he's not going to catch it. Well, he's not even running the off the he, at this point he's not even running and in the second off place, the line of scrimmage. They don't have to worry about him. He's out of the play. So that's why he's out of the right. play. It, it doesn't make right. sense to me why they're they do not, it that not way. Anybody. But in other words, you draft Lamar Jackson as your first pick. He's a quarterback of the future. We're four and three now. All right. Let the guy play. In other words, let him uh, play when you're deep in right. the red zone. You're, right. Okay, Flacco you're, you're, was a disaster. You're in the red saying zone. use him more instead of doing one play at a time. Yeah, it would have been for a package of plays. Look at it this way: he won the Heisman Trophy. Don't you think he can make two yards? Listen, it was the same thing, the reason why San Francisco <laughs> lost the Super Bowl to the Ravens. Because they didn't let Kaepernick run the ball. Right. All right. And when you have Joe Flacco in there, he's not going to run the ball unless it's like a naked bootleg where he fools the entire team. Why they didn't try that, I don't know. But when he rolls out, and he when he rolls out trying to find somebody open in the end zone, he's pathetic. I I have a simple suggestion. Watch the game film of the Saints against us. And what they what they, and what they did out. with that kid Hill. Right, they took yeah. Drew Brees out. They, they kept him on once or twice. They kept him on and they mixed They mixed it up, though. And they, and they and utilized this kid. And you didn't know who they, was going to be the quarterback. Right, and they have a whole set of plays for this kid. I mean, I, it was interesting to me comparing like what the Ravens are doing with Jackson and what the, the Saints are doing with Hill and how right. different they were. And they're utilizing successful. them I'm saying more. watch that game film and do what they're doing. Yeah. With well, here's, yeah. here's a problem now, guys, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. The Ravens are four and three now. They have s- three games. Oh, it's a tough schedule. With Patsies. All right. Oakland, Cleveland, who beat us, and Tampa Bay. These are three home I, games. I wouldn't call any of them Patsies, but go ahead. These are three home games. But you have to win. You have to win. Yeah, if yes. you, games, you definitely have to If win. you yeah. lose, yes. lose one of those games, the season's gone. Now, you've got six other games. Carolina, KC, Atlanta, and the Chargers on the road, and the Steelers and the Chiefs, and the Steelers Bengals. and the Bengals at home. And the Bengals, yeah. That's six games. To get to right. 10 wins, you've got to win three of those games. Yep. There is yep. no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And probably if you lose hey. one to Pittsburgh or Cincinnati, you've wiped out any chance Correct. of getting in on a tie. But yeah. if you can win three out of those six games, you wind up ten and six. None of us could complain. But here's what you got to remember, and I'm not—I didn't do my homework on this, but the Sun Papers did. I read it today. So far, the Ravens, the record uh, for the Ravens against the teams they played is twenty-two and twenty-three. 
the first seven games. The rest of the year, it's 35 and 26. So the, uh-huh. the the level of uh, opposition is going to be much greater. You know oh, yeah. we can lose. You know we can lose on Sunday to Carolina. Yeah, they just had a big win against the Eagles. Yeah. Then we They're then we come home to the Steelers. Yeah. Then we play the Bengals. You know, and then we got two games on the West Coast. You almost have to put the loss column against Kansas City. Arguably the the best team or the second best team, and San Diego. I'm not willing to put any of them in the loss column. You're not but watching I, the but same I hear team you. I am. But okay. I hear you. Did you guys see they actually announced a date for that Los Angeles game? It's Saturday. the 22nd. At, uh, I think it's a prime time game on Saturday. On Saturday? The 22nd, yeah. Okay, what, well, at night? Yep, it's a, a night yeah. night game, 820. Okay. Well, that game's going to mean a lot. They're I, playing a day earlier, but they're playing at night, so it kind of evens out, I guess. Hey, but the other but, is- you know, coming back to uh, the the thing when I that I mentioned to you guys earlier about losing these games by six points. You know, when you look at it, you can understand the Ravens uh, never, you know, not getting back into postseason because the only team worse than us in in, in that kind of a record is the Cleveland Browns. Well, so when you when you when you start to factor that in, you say there's a fundamental problem with the team in that regard with these t- close games. Great teams, or I should say, good teams, win those kind of games. But they win their share. Kind well, of listen, they win their share of those games. Look, we, we've we've been watching the offense shoot itself in the foot now for ten years. Yes. So it's you know with a very good By the defense way, typically. By the way, I looked it up because I kept thinking about Flacco, you know, because he got that big contract after the Super Bowl. You know, he hasn't thrown a winning touchdown pass, um, a winning touchdown pass since t- uh, 2013. I did not know that. No, I didn't know it either. 20, now, so, so look at that. When you look at some of these problems, you, uh, these, these examples, you begin to understand w- what the problem is with the Ravens. They can't score late to, to win these games. We lose too many of those games. Uh, Flacco is ineffective in a sense of pulling a game out of the hat that we haven't done that very well. And you start to see it, that we are, we're always teetering around whether or not we're going to be 9-7. and seven. We're somewhere there. We're a little better than an average team, but not a whole lot better. And we keep repeating it over and over again with different players. Everything you just said, and I agree with everything you said, lends itself that we should have gone for two. All uh, right? I, we should have gone I, for two. You got Lamar Jack. Listen, I spent the whole day, afternoon Sunday at the, in the tailgate <laughs> railing against what uh, what the coach for Tennessee did. And I argued earlier with you. in the game. And I argued with you. He was wrong to do it. it. He was not wrong to do it. All right? <laughs> I argued with you. I know we did. All right? Listen. When you're, especially the Ravens, when you're in that position and you're going up against Drew Brees, you know it, Donald, I know it, Jake, you know it, Barry, you know it, that if New Orleans won that toss, they would have scored a touchdown. I didn't feel that way. Oh, come on. What I game didn't. were you watching? I thought he was going up and down Flacco the field. was going to win that game. But if I'm they go for it, if they went for it and missed it, then you get, you the, get the, the judgment of not using Tucker. You the best kicker in the, in the world people in the history. About that. You, that just kick it and go to overtime. You have to dare to be great. You have to dare to win. You just have to. That that, that first quarter was crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's the, uh, true, Saints. Bruce. I, I, I would say the only thing about that, because I think it's a play that you know most of the time you certainly would do you go for the tie the but the only thing that would add to that is when uh, that you when he kicked that other one and it went through it almost was bad and you went wow that wind is really fierce he yeah. never and misses a kick like that it no almost... i mean that wasn't you're right it wasn't like he just totally missed it it looked like it was making you know a turn a sharp turn like and then that was the wind and so that would be the only reason I would think to go for it is the wind seems to seem to be a, a real problem. Listen, he and, and there was there was one unsung part of that game also, that opening drive, which was the most unimpressive ten minute eighty yard drive I've ever seen. I mean, they were gutsy. I mean, the fake punt, they went yep. for it on fourth down like two or three times. Yes. But what it did is it wore out the defense, didn't it? Yeah. Because it came back because the fourth quarter. They were I looking gassed. Drew Brees was That's, on the money. He, he was. He abused. Yeah. He abused he, Jimmy Smith. And he had scored. He scored three. He scored seven points in three quarters. Jimmy Smith had one of the worst and that games. Did, well, he had. we missed Humphreys, didn't we? Yeah, we really did. Uh, well, for two I years, we been saying, "Oh, we need Smith. We need Smith. We need Humphreys." <laughs> hey, the greatest we need call. Humphreys, we don't need Smith. Right. The greatest, that, 
He either he's either not in condition because he didn't play the first four games. I I don't know, but they they certainly really took advantage of him. No question about it. The greatest yeah, call, Michael. That yeah, guy well. Thomas is also a very good receiver, and evidently Breeze is good too. Yeah. Well, the greatest call that Harbaugh ever made, in my opinion, we're up fourteen to three. We're setting up to kick a field goal to go up twenty one to three in the Super Bowl, and he ran a fake field goal. He took the whole stadium by shock. One guy, one guy, Willis, smelled it, but that was it. The whole 49er team was out of the play. He dared to be great. And you know what happened? They got the ball down to the two, the five-yard line. We got the kick. He threw to uh, Jacoby Jones, and we still... And we still got the touchdown in that right. series. You got, you got a Hall of Fame quarterback against a Hall of Shame quarterback. Oh, he's not that bad, but <laughs> <laughs> it is that bad. If you put, if I just brought them in this room, so you can have either one of these quarterbacks. Who do it's, you want? It's, it's not, that's not fair. He's one I'm of the st- greatest st- quarterbacks. I'm still ever. kicking the point after. I'm he, still kicking it. The well, word "great" should never be attached to his name. How'd well, you guys react after he missed it? So like, you like, know what stunned. I did? I told you. I tell you, I give it up. Like losing my mind over these losses. And I just moved on. You know I, what I mean? I blamed myself. Why? Because I said it out loud. Would you? Really? The announcer said, said it out loud. It happened I know he did, but I was at the stadium. I said well, it out they loud. Always, the announcer's always. I, I jinxed. I said it out loud. They always say he never misses. Well, what I one. said was, there's no way he can miss this one, right? There will be no and lawsuits. Then boom. There'll be no lawsuits allowed based on that statement by Thank Carl you. in the <laughs> mission. Thank you. Listen. All right, Barry. You, I mean, Donald, you're, you're, you've been quiet. So, what was your take on it? I, I didn't no, talk to you since, and you, I tell, I'd I, like to hear your astute take. I thought, I thought it was an interesting game it's going in. Great game. Uh, greatest, best defense against the best, you know, against offense. offense. I still think we're the best defense. We didn't lose that I game. Agree. No, no, he didn't score 40 points. Yeah. We you, know? Yeah, no, you heard no. me say that last week. Yeah. I said he's never going to. Nobody's right. going to come well, to Baltimore. Well, it's hard to say that we're a, one of the best defenses when we basically keep losing games in the fourth quarter when the defense can't stop the other team. But once uh, as in a good while, as we may be, we keep losing those games. Yeah, well, you're and right. In the fourth quarter, but we give it up. Could, Joe could, Flacco could not generate a field goal drive in two tries against the Browns. Right. All right? That was a right. He could right. not. Ge- Baker Mayfield outplayed him to no end, okay? That did happen. Hey, let me tell you the clock is ticking on everybody. And, you know, 9-7 and seven is not going to get us in the playoffs, and we got too much Excuse talent. Me. Excuse me. We I, got too much talent not right. to get in the I told, playoffs. I told you in September, even if we win the Super Bowl this year, Joe's going to get Dilford. Could be. Could be. And obviously, if we don't make the playoffs, you he's said definitely going to get— he'll, what's, Well, he wouldn't be Dilford at that point. He'd be Bowlard, I guess, if we don't make the playoffs. What a difference it is. But, you know, 5-2— you know, and two. Yeah. Instead of four and three. Huge. It's a horrible loss to Cleveland. Absolutely. That, that Cleveland loss was, uh, uh, you can't, it's hard to comprehend. How, I mean, especially when you're seeing Cleveland get destroyed since we played them. I That's, mean, they're not a good, you know, it's impossible to lose against we, them. We lost to the Bears last year when the Bears were really bad. And yep. that came back, it blew up the whole season. I'm just going to stop going to games because the last three Ravens games I've been to are this one, the they Bengals lose, game, and the Bears game. Listen, you can't lose, you can lose one game a year at home. And that's fine. Yeah, but, but don't. But right. But when you're four and four on the road at best, and that's what we'll be is four and four on the road at best. All right, you've got to win seven games at home if you want to be a good team. And there was no excuse to lose that game. We outplayed yep. them. We dominated for three quarters, and just when it mattered. And yeah, it was more of a defensive loss down the wire than Joe. And it was a great Joe engineered a great drive to get the touchdown. But you know what? We lost. And what was, that's the, the, what was the difference in running uh, yardage in that game? Oh, they, they, New Orleans plowed over us. They had about 140 yards running. We had 77 yeah. with yep. eight different carriers. They had Only twice, problem, twice though, as many, Dad. Is right. we were missing, they had twice as many yards on the ground. We were missing three guys on the offensive line. And, well, I, and I didn't think the offensive line played badly. No, no they did. All right, having said that, they had twice as much yardage. Wouldn't you think on a windy day that they would do everything to make the running game be superb? I thought that, well, know, we don't have a, we they, don't have the players for that. Guys, we they don't ran, have they, a great they, running. They you know, ran we, for four point eight yards we a carry, guys. Every year, saying we just uh, can't have a running back. We don't have a running back. Well, why don't we? We have do a have a running, running back. back. His name is Lamar Jackson. Uh, yeah. w- where's yeah. Ozzy? Where's Ozzy doing? You Listen, know, I, doesn't he see that hey, we don't Sean have a running McCoy back? Is available. I, I think uh, look, that's true. A lot of this is <laughs> circumstances too, guys. I mean, I, they did they they ran the ball successfully. I thought the offense played fine. On Sunday, 
You're right, except yeah. the two drives in the fourth quarter. Okay, the, I hear you. You know, I mean, it's, 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 not like, it's not like we're getting blown out. I know Barry made the point about all those close games. That's a blessing and a curse. That means you're, you're competitive in the NFL. Yeah, but you can't lose every game. No, you can't. Yeah, I know. But you, you can't, can't be under five. On I know. All right, we're way past the break. we got to head out. This is Bruce Posner. Sorry I'm too fired up today. Back in a few minutes here on Don't CBS. Don't apologize for that. CBS Sports Radio 1300 with Donald and Carl and Barry on this special edition, this Wednesday edition of Science and Kirk Presents in the Nest. Science and Kirk presents In the Nest every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Hey, that's what happens when you stay with it. Way to be patient, baby. Good job. That's the way to go. With Bruce Posner on CBS Sports Radio 1300, we're taking a close look at the upcoming Ravens game. Now, once again, here's Bruce Posner. All right, like we always do, I say the game's over. It's in the rearview mirror. Let's move on, Carl, because it's it's over. We got a tough one coming up. And now we face the University of Maryland Carolina Panthers. <laughs> all right, with Tory Smith and DJ Moore and Jermaine Carter. Right, and of course from Stanford, Christian McCaffrey, Greg Olson, Cam Newton. We're not going to shut this team out on the road. They just had a tremendous win against well, the Eagles. That was mind boggling. Well, Donald Donald was mentioning the you know the running game of the Saints, which did they, they they ran all over us. They ran for 170 yards, whatever it was. And uh, you got the Panthers, who averaged 165 yards rushing the ball at home. Well, McCaffrey's you unbelievable. Know? I think this guy Kamara was great. I think that we didn't have an he, answer. They for were him. good. And with all that, we still should have won the game. But. Yep. You know, but the Panthers are hard hard to beat at home. Very, very, yeah. very tough. And uh, the fact they won that game against the Eagles. And they were they down had, 17 nothing in the seven, fourth quarter, right? It was right? unbelievable. I couldn't believe it when I saw the score. I could not believe it. I yeah. mean, I, the last time I looked, it was 17 zip with right. like nine minutes or 10 right. minutes ago or something. And they wound up winning. But, uh, all right, we'll get to that. You know, the, the Ravens are, by the way, the last eight times they've come off a loss, six and two. No, well, that's a good sign. Okay. Julius Peppers, Luke Keechley, all right, Cookley, Eric yeah, no, Reed is back. Great field goal kicker, Graham Gano. Norv Turner is the offensive coordinator. Is he really? Yeah. All right. Brady Hoke, you remember him from Michigan? He wasn't too good. The Terps, <laughs> the Terps beat Michigan when he was there. He was a defensive line. But uh, this is a good team, Donald. Cam Newton is great. He can beat you by himself. Oh, yeah. He can run and cause some serious trouble when he runs. He's, he is like a truck. Eric Weddle okay, called him a okay, dinosaur Newton. today. What, what's that? He's probably best col- one of three or four best college quarterbacks I ever saw. Yeah, without question. Uh, but their offense, their offensive weapons, McCaffrey, yes. Olsen, tight end, yes. And I know you, mar- you named a couple of Maryland wide receivers. They're not scaring anybody. No. I mean, I think our defensive backs will look a lot better this week. Than they have, you know, against uh, against bounce uh, back game against Jimmy New Orleans. Funchness, Devin Funchess. I mean, they, they don't have. Hmm. He's had a good year. He's, he's not, our leading he, receiver. I believe he's not Michael Thomas. Yeah, no, he's not Michael Who, Thomas. You know, he's not AJ. Good. He's not AJ Green. I think Jimmy Smith bounces back this week. Yeah, well, you know what? There's options now. Mm-hmm. All right, if he doesn't, and is Marlon Humphrey back? I haven't heard much, but um, Jimmy Smith will bounce back because we don't have, Michael Thomas is not on the field. I mean, this is not an impressive bunch of receivers. But don't say so, that. That's going to come back to bite I'm you. I'm telling you. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's interesting. I saw that there was a trade made, which I didn't realize they made trades in the middle of the year. There's a deadline. Got, deadline's it's, next, it's, week. It's next more, week. It's gotten more and more popular in the NFL the last yeah, couple of years. Well, well the, let's see. The Giants and the Saints made a trade. And you would think at this stage of the season, they must have at least one weakness that they could... It's, they, yeah, but there aren't that many. A lot of the a trade. lot of the trades, uh, they killed trade for a draft pick. It would they be fun, but it's not. There's not. It's not very prevalent in the NFL. If Lashawn McCoy didn't have the domestic abuse allegations against him, I could see the Ravens making a move for him. They're not. You know, probably wind up on the uh, Patriots like everybody yeah. else. You know, what I mean, but uh, and Josh Gordon's starting to play some ball. I've heard that uh, Patrick yeah. Peterson wants to be traded too. That mean he, he could be linked to New England. He reversed that today. He did. Yeah, he okay. reversed that. Hey, it, you know, these guys, they sign big contracts and they want to leave. I mean, uh, I, I think the team that we have put together is good enough to win the division. 
And even if they did get a running back, like the offensive line is just not blocking for the run protection. I just it, I don't see how much of a difference it would make. You're not going to get a game changing running back at this point in the trade block. All right, we'll get to our game in the final segment. Let's look around the league this week. And first of all, you got Miami getting seven and a half against the revived Houston team. And uh, Houston is like, what they lost three in a row to start the year. Now they've won four in a row. Yeah, there's no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, to uh, me, that's a you know Miami is on the down low with the quarterback problems. And yeah, Brock. calling the coach, calling the coach an idiot and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, that's the wide <laughs> that receiver did that. Well. Right? Oh, we ought to pick him up. <laughs> pick that guy up. And how about the Eagles, Barry? Three and four. The now the world champions. It shows you how tough it is to uh, how tough it is to repeat. And they got a tough game. It doesn't look like it on paper. They got to play Jacksonville. In London. In London. Yes. You remember yeah. what happened to the Ravens in London, Barry? I'd like to forget. Oh, yes, please. It was disaster time. <laughs> it was a disaster against Jacksonville. Jacksonville is like the home team there. Yeah. I mean, they, they love Jacksonville there. And they're used to that week. Yes. You know, it's not, it's not new to them. They don't have the jet lag. They know it, how to deal it, with it. It appeared that it, that appeared to be part of the problem for the Ravens last year. Jacksonville was obviously a very talented team last season, but it seemed like that London trip really took a lot out of the Ravens. The Eagles are in trouble. Well, there's going to be a football team in London. I don't know if it'll be at Wembley. The rumor was that, might be that two. the owner of Jacksonville tried to buy Wembley Stadium. Yeah. And he said he's not moving Jacksonville. He was just making an investment. If I want one team to go, I want it to be the Chargers because nobody goes to their games anyway. In Los well, Angeles, I, I don't but know, but they the, just moved. So. Tottenham is building a football, soccer combo stadium mm-hmm. with a field that slides out. Right. So you would think they might be the first team, uh, first city to get a team. Because what's they, the attendance there and for at Wembley for the football games? Uh, the, oh, they sell out. Eighty four thousand. Yeah. Do they really? Yeah, eighty four thousand. Yeah. Now, what, what they're talking about now is putting two teams in London. No, they have to put and then, two. And then they when a team when a team travels, they do a two two game road trip. They basically. have to put two. Yeah, they have to. Yep. But uh, oh no, Barry, listen, you got to remember, London London is a big town, and there's football following there. I mean, kind of like the way soccer's being followed here. It's not followed like football. But when these teams come from London in the summer to play here, they draw 50,000, 60,000 people for exhibition games. Yeah. So, in other words, could the U.S. have a team in L.A. and a team in New York in the Premier League? Yeah, they yeah, definitely they could. could. I agree. All right? But it will probably never happen because those franchises are worth so much more than NFL franchises, all right? which really is hard to believe. But that's a fact. It's a global market. Yeah. Well, they don't have as many players on the team, so they, they, they save a lot of money that way, too, don't they? Barry, Barry. They pay guys $40 million. Eight out of dollars. the top ten franchises in the world are Premier League soccer teams. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't doubt that because that. It's, it's gigantic. Yeah, we spoke about that. Look, they get huge attendance wherever they go, but I'm saying they also play with uh, far fewer players I'll do, some, I'll do some stats on it. I think their average salary is just dwarfs the average salary in the NFL. Oh, no. The, some of those guys get uh, uh, two, three hundred, uh, you know, uh, I mean, what's it, like $35, $40 million contracts. It's insane. All right. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Insane. And, they, and they get people from all over the world. Yeah, that, they, they have ratings. They have TV ratings and TV advertising globally. Now, how about the Packers? Don, Who are they playing? They're getting 10 points. Against the Rams, but wow, oh. the Rams are good. They're really good with girls. The Rams are better and good, and the Packers are not. Or just very average. I very mean, average. Middle, middle of the road. Yeah, they're, they're being carried by the quarterback and not much yeah. else more. I don't, I don't see that at all. Barry, uh, he's, he is amazing, though. I mean, when you see him, he's, he is, Rogers is really extraordinary. You he know? is, but how many more rings does he have than uh, Joe? He's only got one? He's only got one. Well, right. Favre's got a couple. That's right. <laughs> All right. The Saints. The Saints go to Minnesota. And Minnesota's been an up-and-down team. All right? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, can the Saints pull off another win? Another. This is a nighttime game Sunday I night. I think so. Me too. Yeah, I was impressed. I like, the, I like the Vikings. I was impressed by the Saints. Do you? Yeah, I like the Vikings in that game. In Minnesota. In the, you know... That game could be a really high scored game because you got two dome teams in the dome. I thought the Saints were a tough minded team, a physical team, and they've got Breeze and Thomas on top of it. Yeah, now you're turning I, Thomas into like. He's good. He's not. He's not. Oh, he's good. He's not premier in the NFL. I think he's top five. 
Huh? I think he's top five. He could be. I tell you what, we're overlooking the Ra- Ravens' defense is so phenomenal. They are really especially good. in this league this year. They are, I they agree. Are drop dead good. They were the best defense winning against the best offense. The ru- but, and with all and with the wind in their face and all the other stuff they had to deal with. But well, the, the, the way the NFL is now, they should have won the game. That doesn't guarantee with, anything. Without, without the wind, I think they'd have won the game. I do too. Well, listen. Well, I don't know because you get, you come back to that same thing about you know we said last year. Well, this defense is getting better and better, and we still lose in the fourth they quarter still, time they do. and time They've again. They've done it. It's true. You know, you know and, yeah. and why is that? I don't think we have an answer to it except that offensively we need to score more points. I guess is the only the only way you could compensate. You would think a, a tough, great defensive team does not allow a team to pick up ten points. You know, to beat you in the fourth quarter, I which do, is what happened did, last week. I, I'm not as look. I'm not a expert, right? You did good. they change? Did did they change the defensive scheme in the fourth quarter? Did they go I away from man to man and go to more of the zone? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Some dude behind me was yelling that they were. I don't, I don't know. know. They were. No, I, I, I'm not going to tell you I, that I don't know. But I know one thing: seventeen to seven, they have the ball, and Breeze gets tackled, and he's falling down. And he flips a third and eight pass. Oh, that was, oh, 10 that was yards, painful. He sure did. And that did. could have yeah. been the game. Yes, Once that play correct. happened, I said to Ryan, your trouble. brother, I said, we're in trouble. He said, well, you're crazy. We're winning. I said, I'm yeah. telling you. You know, yeah. that one play absolutely killed us. Yes. You know? That was towards the end yep. of the third quarter, right? During yeah, that, with that, that drive. Yeah. What did you guys think I, of? I have trouble with the fact that they pretty much announced that they were only going to have one guy go deep the whole game. Every play, they sent Brown deep. Mm. And they put it in the newspaper, even. <laughs> they gave an interview with it. I mean, guys, you know, we, we don't want you to work too hard, so we're going to tell you right now. We're just going to send him down. That, I mean, but, but, that was a little predictable. You, How many that was. touchdowns are you going to score with one receiver going deep? The that whole was a game. little predictable. The whole game. If you yeah. talk about non-predictable, you, that, you, did you watch Kansas City this past week? I mean, uh, that offense is beyond comprehension. we got to go there, and we got to go there when it's going to be zero degrees. It's not a, yeah. You know, I know you said we could win, but it's pretty doubtful. Unless, I don't see it. Unless that they've got a be- clinch, then they could. Is that late? Is that late? It's this late season? in the year. Okay. I think it's yeah. like week twelve or That's, something. San Diego will still be on their heels a little bit, unfortunately, and they'll probably be playing for the best record too. So it, I, hey, it I could be a wild that. card game us against San Diego. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. it's out there. Oh, hey, I agree. Listen, the last time we went out west, it was a disaster. If you remember. That was a Sunday night game, wasn't no, it? No, no. We had two straight West Coast uh, games to start right. the season. You remember yeah. that? And we, and it was, no, I was, there was that Denver? Was there, that was when we were a Super Bowl team. And we had the first game Oh, we game had Denver, year. too. We had, it was Denver, Denver Oakland. The, the well, Denver, Ravens. Oakland. Then later it was San Francisco and then Arizona. They had four yeah. games on the West Coast. They lost all four? Uh, I know they lost to San Fran because Torrey Smith beat us on a bomb. They did lose all four, I believe. They, they, did, only they lost to Oakland. Yeah, they did yeah, lose they lost all four. to Oakland, yeah. which was, that was Derek Carr's coming out party. Yeah, that was a horrible All right, that was we're way past season. the break again. Let's get out to break number two. Bruce Posner, you're listening to Science at Kirk Presents in the Nest. That last segment was brought to you by Steve Krulovitz and Krulovitz Tennis, the number one teaching pro in Baltimore. Uh, check him out at KrulovitzTennis.com. He has clinics. He teaches Every which way you can, I, you know, get private lessons. He's indoors for the winter, and he's also the head coach of the Gilman tennis team, which was the champion team last year. And we'll talk about Gilman when we come back, because I think Cyrus Jones was a great pickup. All right? So far, it looks like it. Back in a few minutes. Over, over, four wheels. Under, under, 33 buzz. Holy Tahoe, holy Tahoe. <laughs> In the Nest, presented by Science and Kirk, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m., we take an in-depth look at the upcoming Ravens game on CBS Radio 1300. Nowhere else we'd rather be than right here doing this. Now, Donald Science and Bruce Posner in the Nest. All right, back here for the final segment. All right, guys, let's get into it. Got a good 10 minutes left to talk about the game on Sunday. Uh, Donald, I'll start with you. How do you see the game going, and uh, will the offense be back? Will the defense be back? What do you think? The defense, I got, is a sure thing. The offense, I just don't know which Joe Flacco is showing up. Good way to put it. Very good way to put it. But uh, I, I, you know, we'll go, we'll go to Barry. Barry, what's your take on the game? Uh, well, I think uh – 
I'm going to go by what we've been talking about or what I've been talking about earlier. If we don't get um, basically uh, at least 17 points ahead going into the fourth quarter, we don't win. So I'm going. I'm sticking with our our fourth quarter problems because that team's difficult enough as it is, and I wouldn't want to be facing them up by ten points in the fourth quarter because I, I'm not sure we'll be able to hold that kind of a lead. That's so, a that's uh, a very that's a good troubling point. game. It is a troubling game. Now, now, I wish you commission you to see how many times Green Bay holds the lead. <laughs> well, <laughs> but the, but the, but we we know that 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 defense is a is a questionable defense to begin with. We're supposed to be a, a way above average defensive team. Our numbers show it. You know what I mean? Yeah, they yeah. do show it, except in those circumstances. Fourth quarter. All right, let's get a little optimism from Carl Thank here. You. That's right. Uh, I mean, look, I know we're 4-3 and three and they're 4-2. and two. I still think we look better than a 4-3 and three team. That's I think the we're playing. I know it is sad, but I'm, I think we're playing better than 4-3. and three. And I, I think our offense is better than Carolina's offense. I think our defense is a good bit better than their defense. I think we win this game. I absolutely think we win. I think we win 24 to 13. I, I think we're just better. There's, they don't have any of those offensive weapons that sometimes can torch us. Not, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Only thing the, I, the Carolina defense is weak up the middle. Tight ends are killing them. We're going to have crossing patterns. We're going to have our tight ends. We're going to have a big game. Well, big by Raven standards, 24 points. And that'll be enough to win the game. Barry made a great point. All right? I, I'll give it to you, Barry. The two road games we won this year were outright blowouts. All right? They were yeah. outright blowouts. We blew out Pittsburgh, and then we really blew out Tennessee. I wonder what would have happened against Pittsburgh if they were only down by seven going in the fourth quarter. And it's very hard to figure that we're going to hit the fourth quarter up like 24-3 to on the road against Carolina. It really, it's, it could happen, but you just can't see it. And if we, no. if we continue to have the double wilting of offense and defense down the wire, we're staring at another disaster on Sunday. Now look, we're only a two-point favorite. I mean, that's, that's like, pretty amazing that they're two-point favorites, I think, on the road in Carolina. I think that's surprising. That the it, Ravens are to, me, it, to me, it is too, to tell you the truth. But you know, it's not like we got blown out by New Orleans. But this thing about losing games down the wire, you know, you don't lose down the wire when you're winning 20 to, 21 to nothing and you have 10 sacks. And Pittsburgh, I don't know where they were that night. They were just, they didn't show up. Boy, we had them down for the count, didn't we? I think it was never a game. I think, but I mean, just in the season in general, I didn't think the Steel, I thought the Steelers were on their way out. They're never on the way. No, they're not. No, and here they're they in first it place. They put it. They get better as the year goes on. That's that's the secret of that team. You've just exposed the weakness of guys who have to bet because uh, <laughs> two points. They take a great team like, uh, let's say, a, a good team like Green Bay, and give them two points against uh, New Orleans. You know, and they're much better in New Orleans. Uh, it just can't go by the point spreads. The point spreads don't mean anything. Well, they mean less than they've ever meant because there's been so many upsets. But, you know, in what's co- funny. In college, you get an 18-point point spread, you know, on a, on a big game. You know, that kind of thing. You just can't do it in, in pro football. Hey, how about Ohio State losing? Was that great or what? I tell you, I, I got a charge out of that. That was pretty shocking. I get blown out the way they did. But, uh, you know, that's another story. But you never know what happens today in the NFL. Look what Buffalo did at Minnesota. It was an un, it was unbelievable how they won that game. And no, look, they're two-point underdogs. If Carolina beats us, it's not even an upset. Right. It's like, okay. I, I, I really believe we're we come a much— back, I think we're a much better team than Carolina. Carl, we come back four and four. That's I rough. I tell you what. Woo! And then, and then you got to play Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh— Come on, to beat them twice in a year is going to be tough. Yeah. And they're playing some ball. I don't think Le'Veon will be back, fortunately. Although, I don't know. That ship might have sailed. No, I don't think he's coming back. And, and, but yeah, I don't think so. But their, their running back has been more than adequate. Yeah, but yeah. Their, their defense isn't so great. No, it isn't. No, it isn't so great. And I tell you what, they're playing Cleveland this week. And, you know, they're eight-point favorites. Cleveland should have beaten them opening day. Cleveland has been in almost every game. I mean, they yeah. got, 
I mean, last week they got blown out, but well, they wasn't it? No, they have four overtime. overtime no, is there four overtime last. games okay. for them. Right. Yeah, they have four overtime games. At least three. That's unheard of. It's, and I, think, I, I, never, I think the Saints game would have gone to overtime, but they missed a point after. Right. Okay. Oh, maybe. I think. Yeah. And the only one I'm not that sure. won, the only one they won was against us. It sure was. All right. And okay. we had the ball twice, and all we had to do was drive for a field goal one time, twenty yards. Yep. And yes. If, and if you remember, Tucker was hitting from 56, 58 that day. Yes. Yeah. You and know. we couldn't pull it out against the Browns of all of all teams. Not only that, we couldn't hold them to a tie. Yeah, I know. A tie would. <laughs> We'd be in first place. A tie would have been the end of the no, world. No, it would have been fine. You play with. No, would have been. You play with a lockdown defense. You're going to win four out of five games. Everybody, everybody thinks football is offense. Football is defense. No, not anymore. No, and, and, no. And the, the Ravens still have an advantage because of their great defense, but the way the league is set up now, the way the game is set up now, is not as big of an advantage as it used to be. The only thing is, with a guy like Drew Brees, he doesn't let you... They weren't going to get beat by 11 sacks. He threw the ball so fast it was beyond belief. He was great. About, and they ran the ball so much. I didn't think yeah. Breeze beat us. I thought Kamara beat us. Kamara. And that kid Hill. Kamara was great. He and, was great. And he is great. So that was no that was And, no and the way they used Hill, which oh. is everything we should be doing with Lamar. It, I mean, that guy was gold for them. I think. He, he made positive plays every time he touched the ball. I don't know if it'll be this week, but I think against Pittsburgh, we're going to see a lot more against uh, about Lamar. I, I want to see him in for a package of plays, not one play. Put him in for two, three, four plays. I, I, I don't see why they don't do it. What do you, I mean, why not try that? I mean, especially when you're not do, when you're not moving the ball uh, as we as we did in terms of running at all. You say, well, then, and when he did run, he he did reasonably well. You say, well, why not keep trying that? Why not keep working that? Well, I mm-hmm. say when they get in the red zone, give the ball to Lamar. That's my opinion, and let's see what happens. And maybe one time a game, let him play the whole series. Yeah. Maybe at the start of the second half, well, if we get the ball, let him play. Just let him play. Yeah. See but what, what is the do. reason we're? What is the reason, uh, Bruce, that we're running so poorly this year? I mean, this is worse than last year. Well, I, I think that this year, especially this last game, you were missing. James Hurst, you were missing uh, Alex Lewis. And then the next center, what, Bozeman got hurt. Yeah. It was pretty crazy what was happening. The I, only guy who's I, been healthy the whole year is uh, Yonda. I didn't feel like we were getting stuffed. I mean, they, were, they were, had some effective runs up the middle. They were very weak going on the outside. I don't have it in front of me. How many passes did we throw, Jake? I think uh, Flacco threw 39 passes. Well, that's good. It is good. That is good for him. You know, because when he hit, starts hitting 50, we're out of time, guys. Prediction time. You go first. 24 there, 13, Ravens. All They're right. a better team. Prediction. Ravens, definitely the better team. Wins by two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. Barry Levinson, your take. Uh, I'm saying uh, Panthers 28 uh, 20 for uh, us. Yeah, I, I think the Panthers are going to win 24. Uh, probably 19, all right, uh, on the road. I think our defense shows I, up. I think that uh, I'll, I'll stay with it. I can't go with the Ravens on the road unless the team's really bad, and the Panthers are not a really bad team. But their wide receivers are. All right. Man, yeah. oh, man, you're really hitting me with two Maryland guys. With Tory, <laughs> with right. Tory and DJ right. Moore. But the, you, need, you need some Duke players. Yeah. The defense has shown up every week this, so far this season. Why would it not show up this week? I agree. We shall well, it, it may it might show up. Uh, uh, it may show up, uh, but the question is, how is our offense going to do? And if we keep turn, and if if Carolina gets enough chances, uh, they could start racking up points. Look, in two weeks, we're going to know where this team is. Uh, according to paper, they're going to be favored both games. If they win both games, they're six and three, yeah. and they're sitting there looking pretty. Yep. All right. Yep. And yep. let's, let's hope that's how it goes. We'll be back next Sunday at our regular time on Sunday, 9 o'clock. The London games are over. We're out of time now. Barry, thanks a lot. Uh, Thank stay you. tuned for Coons Ford Turp Talk right after the show, after the break.